Okay, welcome back, uh, everyone. We'll continue with what we were discussing. So till now, we have seen how um, Satan tries to intrude, uh, oppose, and um, you know we just now touched on. Yeah, basically opposition. We we talked a lot about it. Now let's move on to the next method, and that is oppression. Oh, sorry, deception. Deception. Yeah. So deception, as the term itself uh, shows us, is about speaking a lie as if it is the truth. And our best example is what Satan did with Eve. Remember, he deceived her. He said that she uh, and her husband they will be they will become like God, but that didn't happen. Isn't it? It was a lie, but the way he spoke it, he he deceived, right? He made it sound like the truth, and that is what deception is all about. Where Satan will tell people um, a lie like a truth, and when we agree with him, then the problem happens. Okay. Yeah. So we've. Understood that, and uh, Paul, you know, he writes to the Corinthians. There are uh, scripture passages here, Second uh, Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three and four, where he says that I don't, I don't want your minds to be corrupted with deception. Okay, where we are carrying false beliefs in our minds, uh, it's not the truth, but you know, we give ourselves to the lies of the devil now that is another tactic of the evil one which we must safeguard ourselves from and there are many other passages given here saying that you know there will be uh, in the times that we are living in right now there will be a lot of deception it look like the truth but it won't be the truth there will be um, like false prophets like first peter talks about it the book of jude talks about it that there will be people who will it'll, they'll preach like okay this is about god but it won't be so how can a believer discern whether something is true or something is a is a lie spirit of discerning okay okay See, when Satan deceives, right, it will be very subtle. Subtle is, um, it won't be obvious, like how we say, right, Satan won't come with his, with his uh, horns and his tail and, you know, his uh, spear and say, hello, my name is Mr. Satan, I've come to deceive you. Are you ready? Are you willing? It won't be direct. When you, when you don't figure out that he's there, he'll be there. So that is what we say subtle, like it won't be direct, it won't be clear cut like that. Slowly, he'll deceive. So that's his method of how he does it. So then, don't you think believer has to be very sharp? Isn't it? We have to be so sharp, quickly we have to get an understanding that, hey, this is not God's word. This is not the spirit of God. Uh, the Bible tells us we have to be careful, we have to discern, uh, assess every spirit. Is it from God? Is it not from God? We have to understand that. Okay. So for that, the best thing for us to do is to become familiar with the truth. Now think about this. There are uh, 500 rupee notes. Or do we have 500 rupee now? Anyway, some notes we have. Okay, some rupee notes. It's, is it valuable? Yeah, it's valuable. So let's consider that that is the truth. Okay, so the, the original notes currency is valuable. What does Satan do? Deception. He'll make a copy of it. Nobody makes a copy of um, useless things. You know, if you find something unnecessary, some paper lying around, do you think Satan will work hard to make a copy of that? No use, no point. Because it's not valuable. But when there is something that is valuable, 
that's when people will make imitation so then this counterfeit currency because real currency is valuable or there's you know you have like real jewelry there'll be imitation jewelry okay so there'll be an imitation of what is real and what is precious that's what satan does now imagine there's a real currency and then there's all this fake currency how do people how are people trained to identify fake currency any idea people who count and others they are trained okay so what just okay shani yes shani and they study the the real the real money yes you're right you're right thank you so the way to recognize the false is to get very familiar with what is real so the way they are trained is not bring you know a thousand different varieties of false ones and say this is false that is false that, you know just because you won't have the energy to look at all the false that exists don't worry about the false get very used to the real so when there are people who um work with the real currency the moment they touch fake currency they know hey this this is not real throw it so that is the same way that things work for us as believers there might be a lot of deception in the world out there but we carry the spirit of god we carry the word of god right i've written your word in my heart that i might not sin against you so the word is in our hearts we uh, have a lifestyle of spending time uh, with the bible then what happens to us we become so used to the truth that any small error here or there somewhere in our hearts we feel something is not right okay uh, i know it's sounding so good everything is sounding good but something is off you get that sense it's a spiritual sense we get it but for that we have to train ourselves in the truth a lot did you understand so that is the way that we equip ourselves against deception so when satan comes with a false teaching or a false suggestion false instruction um, and he says no if you do this you know it will be so good you can sense it in your spirit it sounds great something is off then you can pick it up okay so that's the way we have to deal with deception just become strong in the truth all right and that will help you uh, overcome any form of deception second timothy chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 can someone read it be diligent to present yourself approved to god a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but shun profane and idle babblings for they will increase to more ungodliness and their message will spread like cancer hymenius and apitius are of this sort okay so basically he is just uh, paul is just telling timothy that uh, timothy has to study the word study the word when it comes to the word of god um for some of us believers maybe that's how we understand it initially a little bit of the word is enough so uh, we may read one verse every day or uh, every sunday go to church listen to one sermon uh, and that's it we don't understand the word much because we don't study so studying uh, is something so important for us as believers you know when we study for our exams how how does it look we are spending many hours we have a question in our minds we say oh okay how uh, how did uh, you know whatever some question how does the photon work how does the electron work then you study all the textbooks that talk about you know these particles and uh, you uh, study all the formula uh, associated with that that is studying when we are putting in lot of hard work because we want to find out we want to understand we want to retain we want to be able to communicate clearly when the questions are asked that is study what is paul to timothy 
study the word don't just like you know observe and when as believers we do that we listen it's there you know in the parable of the sower jesus said the seed is sown some people receive it with joy but very quickly it's taken away satan comes and steals the word it comes seed comes also seed goes also then we are checking for fruit where is fruit in our life fruit seed only is not there which fruit will are we going to get this satan took it got it but when we study the word what happens is the word goes deep inside us it settles and it begins to influence our decisions our choices we can know okay fine uh, i think this is what god's will is for my life because we are studying the word and we are understanding it it's becoming a part of our decision making got it so when we are talking about you know satan and his strategies uh, i don't want to give any credit to satan but he seems quite hard working and quite smart okay uh, uh, he is putting in his best efforts so if he is working so hard as believers we want to be lazy and still we want to say you know i am victorious in christ we are victorious positional reality but come on take some steps also do what god is asking us to do right uh, and rise up against the lies of the devil the deception how let the truth be in our hearts study the word spend time spend become a student of the word okay, never uh, stop being a student if one question comes to your mind go search what does it say what does it say in the amplified version what does it say in this version what does it say in the hebrew what does it say in the greek why because i want to get the word i want to plant the word let that word get some roots let it start growing then one day there is going to be fruit okay but if seed only is not there then can't expect anything so when we study the word the truth becomes a part of us every deception that satan brings can just chop it off say no that's a lie this is a lie that is a lie we can identify it quickly okay uh, and that is about the word so when we have the word in our hearts i also said that holy spirit he dwells in our hearts okay uh, in 1 john chapter 2 26 and 27 it says uh, the anointing in you the anointing in you will teach you all things who is the anointing in us holy spirit he is that anointing who lives inside us he will also teach us what is right what is wrong then whenever satan lies to us we can catch it got it so uh we work by the truth or the word we work by the spirit and we are able to overcome every deception of the devil don't be uh, very simple you know how say uh, eve was so simple whatever satan said ha ah, yes yes you know sure we'll oh i'll become like god okay so we must not be so simple minded be alert and uh, evaluate every thought that comes to us um yeah yes go ahead uh, shani you want to say something yeah so is it is it fair to say that the reason why i guess eve ate the fruit and adam and eve failed because they didn't have the bible and the word to kind of dwell on to so that they wouldn't be deceived from the devil because the serpent came and deceived her and also too they didn't have the holy spirit dwelling in them is that part of the, can can we say that is it fair to say that in terms of why they fail how all humanity fail because of them okay so um though they did not have the written word or the logos the bible that we are referring to right now they were in the very presence of god shani and they had the the spoken word of god god had already spoken to them so they had the word in that sense which could have guided them but they were plain disobedient so that's what happened it it's not like they were not equipped they were very well equipped okay. but they disobeyed yes i think sure thank you so that is about deception
um, and you know the scriptures tell us as the days progress there will be a lot of wrong things even in the name of christian it will be there but we won't be able to discern unless we are rooted in the word so we have to make ourselves strong in the word to overcome every deception okay next would be uh, the next tactic of the devil would be oppression oppression means uh, do you all remember we did one exercise um, that fist fight uh, some two of you came and then we did one fist fight uh, and the person who wins is the one who brings down the other one isn't it so bringing down is what is called as oppression or subduing is what is called as oppression so when two wrestlers are fighting the one who wins uh, is victorious but the one who loses is the one who's been subdued he's been overpowered so oppression means satan and his demons are overpowering some area some aspect of our lives doesn't mean we are possessed of anything no but there is um, we we are weak and they've understood that so in those areas they bring us down so that is what oppression is all about okay that is oppression uh, but the great thing is that jesus came in his ministry we see uh, jesus of nazareth went about doing good and uh, you know he went about setting people free from every oppression of the devil so jesus does not want us to be oppressed in any area of our of our lives he does not want us to be oppressed we should not let the devil oppress us um where does the devil oppress us he will oppress us mainly in our mind so again you know same things that we spoke about maybe we are having um, uncontrolled thoughts uh, with regard to um fear anxiety confusion failure uh, or maybe even depression right we feel like satan is putting some pressure we're trying to come out of those things but it's still continuing in our minds okay so we understand that he's trying to oppress us but of course we should not let him do that we can go against it we can go against those spirits we can declare the word we can bind uh, you know we can uh, do all other things that we know about and be free of that oppression so he can oppress us in our mind and sometimes we find that oppression can manifest in the body in the form of some sicknesses some diseases okay they are sort of directly the oppression of the devil uh, if you take uh, the lady who was crippled she was bound and uh, she could not stand up straight i think it's in luke 13 but jesus he goes he he uh, casts out that spirit and then she is free so there is a sickness that is manifesting because of demonic work so in the same way the oppression of the devil can manifest as sickness in the body also at times not just in the mind but even in the body but when we deal with it then yes that oppression can be broken okay so uh, yeah so that's a little bit about oppression sometimes the manifestation of oppression and possession may look similar okay that also is there somebody may not be possessed but they are manifesting how because they are oppressed in the mind or in the body so that also is a possibility okay so uh, if there's anything about oppression that you want to clarify we can talk about it otherwise i will just jump to the next section which is about possession okay so basically we are uh, seeing a progress from external influences like deception accusation intimidation temptation it's all outside then slowly what's happening 
if there is possibility for the enemy to attack us even more, he's moving to oppression. Then he's moving to possession, right? But in the case of a believer, can a believer be possessed? Hey, come on. <laughs> you should just immediately tell me no. So there's, if you don't give me a direct no, then I'm wondering what's the point of talking for one hour. He can be demonized, not possessed. Excellent. Uh, Sister Gertrude, I want to give you 100 marks. <laughs> so you take all the 100 marks. That's the answer we have to give. A believer cannot be possessed. A believer is demonized. Okay. So, yeah, so important to know that in this course. So now we are talking about possession, demon possession. So when one is not a believer, then they can be demon possessed. So the demon dwells inside them. Now, how does this look? What happens is, in the case of demon possession, the demons will use the faculties of the person to manifest themselves. So uh, it is something like they will use the body of the person. Um, they will use every ability. You know, if the person can walk, uh, if the person can talk, they'll use that body to go where they want to go. Or uh, um, they'll use the voice of the person to talk whatever they want to talk. So all the faculties of the person are taken charge by demons, even actions and behaviors. Let's just say, OK, the person is a, I'm just saying, okay, is a vegetarian. Okay? By birth, they are like pure vegetarian. They will not go towards a non-vegetarian. Um, I mean, in the Indian context, for those who are not able to understand, well, yeah, we, we have this thing about you know being a pure vegetarian here in India. Now, if that person has a demon okay, that causes them to uh, want meat, that will be so weird, isn't it? So the, the demon has taken charge of the person and making them eat meat. And you'll wonder, like, this person is a vegetarian and he's eating meat, like, what's happening? The actions may change. The way this person is behaving will change because the individual no longer has control. So look at it this way. Demon possession means control. It's gone. Out of control. The person wants to do something else, but sorry. The demons are ruling. They are calling the shots. So that is how demon possession uh, manifests. When you use the word manifest, it shows itself like that. Okay. Uh, now, this manifestation, it can be on and off. Like, if you remember, there are, there are people, parents who come to Jesus and they say, like, you know, deliver, uh, my child needs deliverance. The demon is pushing them into the fire. You know, my, my child is being pushed into this and that. So sometimes there is a manifestation. In, in these uh, cases. But then when you talk about somebody like Legion, the whole time he's insane. He lost his mind. And you know he's sitting outside the city. So a person can manifest the whole time, or they, can, they may manifest uh, you know, on and off. So this is how possession looks. And in the case of possession, we have to take authority and we have to cast out the demons, which we will talk about later on. That's briefly about possession and what Satan does through possession. So any questions about possession? Can a little child be possessed? Yes, they can be possessed. Yeah. We've, um, I have actually seen like one meeting that I went to, uh, so many little kids were possessed. How, how could that have happened? I'm imagining, 
that was not a believing community and you know sometimes what people do they dedicate the babies they dedicate it what is the meaning of dedication remember earlier we said when we dedicate we are saying let this person be an expression of that spirit when we dedicate ourselves we say god may i become an expression of your uh, the holy spirit right so when people do that even young children it's surprising they can be demon possessed it can happen okay okay good good question i am um, looking at uh, the comment here brother sanjay says recently uh, okay a woman walked into a particular church and opened fire can we say that there was some kind of demon possession involved in this incident mm. see um, brother sanjay as i've been saying we have to um like assess and then only we can say in, in his reference to his question you can give a clear cut uh, you know conclusion correct correct because it could be it could be self led also for some vengeance or yeah like, could be no it's not like a clear cut answer that sure sure right so i i agree with uh, akhil it's hard to hard to like just confirm and that to being outside so far away whether uh, that person did it because they were demon possessed there could be other reasons as well either there was a personal grudge or um, uh, maybe like a like a mental health issue we don't know so yeah i i would just uh, limit myself to that uh, sister gertrude you have something to ask yes sister so yeah. if a person is demon possessed and we want to pray for that person does he with his agreement or without his agreement we can pray huh. does the person so, has to agree mm -hmm. see most of the time what we say when we do when we minister is um fr from our side we have to be full of faith full of the anointing okay because okay. uh even if the person sometimes doesn't have faith because of the faith that i carry as a minister of god the healing can take place the miracles can take place so uh that way i have to take responsibility as a minister but then to uh, put faith in their hearts is also important which is why what we tend to do is we preach the word first we preach the word what happens when people hear the word faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. then when they have faith in their hearts we can minister we can pray and miracles happen okay uh, so this is how it goes in the case of someone who's demon possessed again we will study in detail the, the steps but what i want to say is if you can talk to the person then we have to talk sister we have to talk to them we have to share the word of god with them and allow them to have faith in their heart then minister okay, okay. Um, but in some cases what happens the person is so demon possessed that uh, their mind is fully gone like you can't even talk to them in that situation you have to take charge you take charge don't worry about uh, talking to them and no point right so you yeah. just go ahead and rebuke the demons cast them out okay thank you sister yeah right yes yes nelson nelson mike please so that they can also hear you what mm. happens to the people those who are mentally disordered don't mm. know even jesus christ don't, don't know about satan also mentally mm. disordered they be different okay see people with mental disorders are not demon possessed okay uh, can some demon possessed people present with mental disorders yes got it so we can't look at any anyone and everyone with a, with an issue uh, like a mental disorder and say oh this person is demon possessed no we should not do that and that is very very wrong okay is there any chance yes there are chances that like any other human being 
those who are um, those who have uh, a mental disorder it's possible that the source of that disorder is a demon it's possible uh, then if that is the particular case then you have to deal with it with spiritual warfare to set the person free yeah one question yeah i don't know whether it is related or not okay no so the person is mental disorder mm. so how he will be judged mm. yeah i know so see some of these questions right honestly uh, i think we can still do our part of praying for them and sharing about jesus with them i know that they may not have the mind to respond to what we are saying uh, but uh, ultimately you know god is the judge and uh, we have to trust that uh, you know god will do the do justice in this kind of a situation yeah right you know it's a tough question actually uh, i'll i'll come to the online students just a moment we have some questions here in class regarding to this only like this matter of patience and all like as you remember the earn on outreach we went to auto rajas uh, over there so like uh, most of the people they are mentally challenged actually yeah. some of them they are not able to understand what yeah. we are actually doing we are praying for them and all yes. but like when we are singing songs and we are praising god that time they are supporting us yeah. so it is like uh, most probably they are not able to understand if they are yeah. mentally challenged what we are doing but if we are praying for them it like it will show they pray Sure. Shall you do something? Yeah, <laughs> thank you for sharing, Abhishek. Uh, the presence of God can still work, and from what uh, Abhishek is saying, he experienced that people were responding uh, to, you know, the presence of God. So that that's a nice thing. Okay, uh, I'll come here to our online batch, uh, Shani. Yeah, is it? Can we say that like when somebody, like when there's a mass shooting or somebody, um, the woman opened fire at the church, can we say that that's the devil getting in somebody's mind? Because somebody just doesn't go and just shoots people. It has a thought. And that thought kind of originates from, you know, that's the devil getting into their head. They just don't wake up one day and say they want to shoot somebody or just kill people. It has to start with a thought. And what you're saying, if it's not from God, it's from the devil. And that's, even if somebody does have a mental problem, the devil can still talk to them and tell them to do these violent things. Is that correct to say that? Yes. See, the evil thought does come from the enemy, isn't it? Even if it's a single thought. The point that I was making is, uh, can we say that they were demon-possessed and they did what they did? That I don't, I, it, we can't just say it like that. But were they influenced by the devil? Obviously, you know, such a thought does not come from God. It comes from the devil. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, um, that's about demon possession. And in the case of demon possession, the way we take charge is to cast out the demon spirits. Can there be one, uh, would there be one spirit, two spirits, multiple spirits? It depends, again, on that particular situation. Uh, and it is possible that multiple spirits can take charge in a body, in a human being. Okay. Now, let's move on. The next method here would be domination. Domination is, uh, as the word suggests, the ability to dominate over larger regions. Now, it's not just about the demons controlling one person. They are controlling maybe a village. They are controlling a city. They're controlling, uh, you know, large geographical parts, uh, maybe even a nation. Remember Prince of Persia, Prince of Greece. So uh, these demon spirits have a larger influence, not just the body of a human being. That is known as domination. And Satan likes to do that. You know, he uh, likes to weaken the nations. We saw that in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 2, 12. Um, and uh, so he's happy to overpower um, cities, 
and places. And in the Bible, we read about certain cities that became the stronghold for Satan. You know, it's like headquarters. From that place, he likes to operate uh, and do his tasks. So in the book of Revelation, there is a term, name of a place called Pergamos, which became, <coughs> the scripture says, it became like the seat of Satan. From there, he was able to do a lot of things. Why did it become a, a seat of Satan? Why do you think? How could Satan stay there so strongly? Anything that may have happened? Yes. Yes, uh, Shani? Can sin be one way? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So sin can be. Um, and uh, apart from that, some sort of demonic practices, occultic practices, disobedience to God, all those things kind of build up. And uh, the more, you know, we've been saying, don't give the devil a foothold. So it not just have a foothold, but it'll have an open door over there. That's why you can easily go and gain a lot of power in certain places. Uh, and maybe that is why it became a center of demonic power, Pergamos, the city of Pergamos. There's also a reference in the bi biblical Babylon in Revelation 18.2. Even Babylon, uh, it talks about how uh, it, it becomes a very wicked place from where Satan can operate. Why? Uh, we, we see that you know uh, witchcraft is the primary reason why uh, Satan gets so much of power in Babylon. So similarly, in some of the places that we see, uh, we may find that Satan is dominating that whole area. Uh, there is a certain kind of a spirit. It might be a spirit of alcoholism, spirit of uh, prostitution, spirit of some kind of oppression, spirit of co corruption, some evil crime, you know, crime against elderly children. So many things happen because those demon spirits are now free. They can do whatever they want to do or uh, mental disorders like they go oppress people in the mind, uh, cause fear, cause insanity. So they can do whatever they, they want, they like, because that area is now being dominated by the demon spirits. And usually how does Satan do this? He does it through people, okay? people. Now, if you uh, go to the book of Kings, uh, first Kings, Second Kings, there is a reference to a woman by the name of Jezebel. Okay? Jezebel. Why is uh, why are we talking about Jezebel? She promoted witchcraft, sorcery. She had a lot of black magicians under her. And when she was promoting those things, evil could thrive. But how did it happen? There was one main person who was giving, like, you know, access or... Uh, uh, granting permission for these things to take place. That was Jezebel. Similarly, you can trace back sometimes to uh, individuals. Like in the Old Testament, there's also another uh, reference to a person called Manasseh, the ruler of Jerusalem in Second Chronicles 33 verses 1 to 6. And uh, you find that through that one individual, some evil is propagated. In the New Testament, in the book of Acts, uh, Samaria, there's Simon the sorcerer. I've talked about this person. Okay? He was showing a lot of miracles and wonders through the dark powers, through demons. So sometimes there are individuals who are given that kind of power in that place. And they, the demons dominate the whole region. And they use this person as one of their agents. Okay. Uh, or um, in Philippi, you remember there was a girl, slave uh, girl with a spirit that Paul cast out the demon from there. So individuals can also be become a tool in the hands of uh, Satan to oppress um, larger areas. And finally, human empowerment. Human empowerment as it states is where there are people who gain a lot of demonic power. Okay, They do this intentionally through witchcraft, through occultism and uh, a lot of evil 
is manifested through their lives. Why do they do this? You know, that's a question people ask. I don't know. Maybe for power, maybe for fame. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there can also be human empowerment where people give themselves over to uh, the evil one and Uh, demon spirits and uh, propagate their activities. So that's human empowerment. Uh, I think we'll stop here for today. But if there are any questions, we can take it up. Uh, yes, Shani, please go ahead. Yeah, can you just repeat over the last thing that you said? Because you froze on the screen. So I wasn't okay. able to hear the last thing you said. Okay. I no, heard I empowerment through witchcraft. After that, you froze. Empowerment and witchcraft. I just gave some examples and I stated that uh, um, Simon the Sorcerer and, uh, you know, the prophets of Baal, Jezebel, these are all examples of people um, through whom Satan was able to do his activities. So they're examples of human empowerment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes, Brother Sanjay. Yes, Pastor, just to get some clarity on demon possession. So could you give us an example of uh, a good example? It could be a, a, a person of today or it could be someone from scripture, a person who is demon possessed, an example of that person, and a person who is probably driven by a demon or who is controlled by a demon, kind of like uh, what what I what comes to my mind is probably a demon possessed person is a person who loses their free will. They no longer operate under their free will, but a person who is controlled or influenced by a demon still has a free will. That means their free will is operative. So, could you throw some light on that? Probably. Okay. So uh, you're asking me the difference between uh, uh, being possessed and uh, human empowerment. Okay. So I would I would. Um, consider that agreement is one of the, the key things here because a person who is demon possessed now they may or may not want the demons in them but for whatever reasons the demons have come in and they've lost control okay so that is the demon possessed individual but the person whom we are referring to as um, uh, empowered by demons are those who willingly who um, in agreement to demon spirits have allowed uh, all, all this to happen. So does that make sense, Brother Sanjay? Yes, yes, it is. I mean, yeah, because they may have an agenda. The ones with the human empowerment may have an agenda. Like if you go to Acts chapter 8, Simon the Sorcerer, he was already called as a god in the city because he had so much power. Right, uh, in in among the people, he was already doing a lot of miracles. Then, when Peter and John they come and they pray for the believers, the baptism in the Holy people are baptized in the Holy Spirit. They start speaking in tongues, and you know what Simon says? He says, uh, "I want the power which you have, uh, and uh, like I'll pay for it. I'll give you money. You give me this power." So it shows one attitude. Wherever he saw power, maybe he wanted it. And that is why he went to the wrong source in the first place to get the power. So people who are um, in, in the human empowerment category, it's possible that they want power at any cost. And they're ready to do anything to get that power. Whereas demon possession may not be like that. You know, a, a person unknowingly... Uh, he fell into some sin and the demon came and attacked them. So that's more like demon possession. But human empowerment is about gaining power. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Yeah, sure. Thank you.
Any any other questions, please? Sister, human empowerment uh -huh. means they'll uh, means they'll be fully possessed with the enemy. Uh -huh. In dealing things and other. Yeah. It's like that, is it? Yes, yes. But they are in agreement, so they are also operating with their own free will. Uh, uh, operating their free will also, both the yes. ways. Yes. Both. yes. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, a, it's a choice that they have made. They want to be in that place. Now, when they come onto this uh, human empowerment, under this uh, thing, huh? they'll be so, fully possessed by the devil. They'll not have a way for their free will to come out of it. like. See, in the case of human empowerment, what we are saying is people want to, they want demons so that they can okay. get the power. Okay. So okay. they're willingly going after it. Okay, okay, sister. Okay. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I, I just didn't see. Uh, yes, yes, Shani. So I just want to make sure I'm clear. So with um, human empowerment, that's a choice. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, they want to be controlled by with the de um, demonic spirits with possession that may or may not they, yes. uh, may, or may, may or may not want to be controlled by demons. Is that was my correct with that? Yes. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. Sure, thank you. And human empowerment is you know one one of the highest levels of um, you know having um, using the power of demons. Okay, so uh, those are the differences. And hopefully we are clear about those things. And if we are, I think we can just close with a word of prayer. And I leave it open. Anyone from the on-campus batch, online batch, please pray. And we can wrap up today's class. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the exposition of your word and the revelation of your word and that you have overcome everything at the cross. We thank you for enabling us to learn many new things which we are knowingly or unknowingly complacent or take it lightly. We pray that we will not only be hearers of your word but also doers of your word. We thank you for Nancy Ma'am and all the teaching that she brings forth. We thank you for all the students who are participating and are recipients of your grace and mercy online and offline. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Akhil. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.